Hello and welcome back everyone to Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, I'm Rock Rocket Rapid Commentaries and in this episode, as we continue on with the Aurora run through, we enter Inferno Cave. God, I fucking hate this zone. Alright, <laughs> Inferno Cave is, is terrible for exactly two reasons. The first of which, Inferno Cave has the problem of being ex absolutely jam-packed with both environmental damage and, um, and, and enemies that characters have really hard times dealing with. Observe! You'll notice that there are three enemies on screen right now, two of which you can barely fucking see. Yeah, I was going to say that if any of those problems can include an eyesore, I would have to agree. This, this map is... Quite a departure from the softer colors we've been used to, like in the doppelganger lab and in, in in the caves, the underground chambers. This is this is actually quite jarring, and uh, and also the enemies are a similar color to the background items, making them even more difficult to see. So you gotta yes, squint. and they all and they also have fire spells. And look at just look at how much fucking orange is everywhere. Ugh. I Damn absolutely it. hate going through Inferno Cave with every character. Nobody handles this area well. Aurora has probably the easiest time due to the fact that she actually has free flight uh, in comparison to everyone else who have got si more situational levels of flight. But um, no one goes uh, go no one goes through Inferno Cave well. I see. I mean, I can't see. Well, I can see, but it's not very comfortable, you know. See, even Igni is getting angry. So many fucking hazards just floating around. There are five enemies on uh, on the screen still. Mm. Oh, whoa! Stretchy physics. Yeah the the blood the blood sides um the blood sides have the uh, small problem of them you know uh, absolutely absolutely breaking uh, breaking apart with their uh, with their limbs. Mind you, the uh, Scythe Mites also had that same problem. It's not necessarily a huge issue, but it is noticeable. I mean, I do, ag I do agree that metal comes from hell, which is why they have electric guitar as part of the background music now. Also safely corresponds... Mm -hmm. And there's another one of those warp gates. Also safely corresponds to the volcano guitar player power-up spewing fire as the attack, although even its pitch has its limits, going only so low before it can't go any no. Bless you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, you'll, notice, you'll notice that I'm actually trying to explore as much of Inferno Cave as I can, and that's actually because of my, uh, uh, my uh, prior playthroughs with both Bloodless and uh, Zangetsu. The, the devs want to actually hide uh, Inferno Cave is not honestly all that big of an area, but each of its uh, additional rooms have a tendency of hiding <laughs> uh, have a tendency of hiding things for our bonus characters. And Miriam specifically gets a lot of interesting stuff in, in Inferno Cave, despite how small of, of an area it is and how 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 much of a bitch of a time she has attempt, uh, attempting to go through it. Dare I say it's actually appropriate that the game's glitching out enemy uh, enemy boxes and character sprites are actually getting stretched out like molten glass in what is what is visibly and thematically a very hot area of the game. It's not supposed to be doing that for the record, but it does yeah. do that. Well, I mean, just like the Ganados are supposed to stop moving after you take their heads off with a variable amount of time that they walk around so that they can finish their walking cycle animations, in which time you cannot you can neither knife nor shoot them because their hitboxes disappear. Yeah, it works out. It's a game glitch that actually serves the thematic purposes of the game, and also the narrative feel. Get back here, you stupid fire elemental! Mm. All right, so now we're gonna do uh, now we're gonna do my favorite boss fight in the entire game. Bipolar Igni. Behold, Orthros! I fucking love this fight. W regardless of what character I'm playing with, with the exception of maybe Zhang. Orthros is the best goddamn boss in the game. It's it's um it's tense. It's somewhat difficult, but it's not overly difficult. Everything he's got is e easily readable. You always feel like a fucking badass taking down Orthros. Or a boss. Yeah, <laughs> stand still. And let me sing you a lullaby. To be perfectly honest, I wish more of the bosses in the game were like Orthros. 
See, I'm thinking the Mr. K uh, boss. Here's the thing. Uh, this fight is way better than most of the Eggman fights, so... I mean, it is. I mean, uh, eight, eight hits on Dr. Eggman can make a really short boss fight. Oh, this yeah. This guy is taking lots of hits. Well, that's because we actually have to deal with the RPG elements, you know, and, you know, the uh, RPG elements make it so that uh, our, that our, our enemies have uh, our enemies actually have worthwhile stats, whereas Dr. Eggman never has worthwhile stats. Yeah, Except for, you know, invulnerability. Damn thing. Yep. Orbos was a little on the easy side. Although Orb although Orthos is definitely easy, um, uh, as uh, as pretty much every character, it's always a fight that I love doing. Ahem. At long last, the sun retrieved the Princess of Lemuria once more. Her subjects still huddled on a distant shore. Aurora's spirit cell, uh, fell aggrieved. In her victories, had she been deceived? A single concern in her mind's fore. Upon whom else could the, could the princess implore? Oh, I started late, but behold, Queen, uh, Queen Aurora. Although not immune to mundane strikes, you may now safely pass through spikes. Yes, we now have spike immunity. This is the power up that I keep thinking that Bloodless eventually gets in her run, but she does not. And I will need, and I'll need you to remind me of that when we actually start doing the Bloodless playthrough, because I keep looking for it and not finding it. See mm. that we are not immune to mundane strikes. These knights are hitting my health bar. Yikes. Yeah. Mm. Thankfully, uh, thankfully Aurora, Aurora can just, you know, sit uh, right in front of the Zephars and, you know, light ray them down. Light ray is way too fucking good for, uh, for, for how easy it is to use. It honestly should do probably somewhere to two-thirds of its current damage uh, for the entire run instead of, you know, starting off really powerful and then just getting more fucking powerful. Dominant the, strategy. The big problem that it has, of course, is that it's light elemental, and a majority of the enemies in the game are really weak to light elemental. Right. The majority of enemies. Like it's it's a it's a small problem that the Cath that the Egovania games have all, all suffer from. If there is if there is elemental weaknesses being uh, being exploited in the game, it's always light. And the thing is, a lot of the a lot of the best. Um, um, uh, weapons toward the end game are light elemental. So not only do they have really high uh, base power, they also they also take advantage of elemental weaknesses. So they're just that much they're just that much more powerful than they realis realistically should be. But yes, as I mentioned last part, all, all this area really does for Aurora is serve as an exit from an uh, from Inferno Cave. I like what that an it's exit an exit it from is. Inferno Cave, mind you, but that's all that's really here. All right. So now that we've actually, no, so now that we have the ability to be, uh, uh, to being immune to spikes and lava, yes, that's the other thing that we got access to that it didn't tell us about. Now we have to go and deal with Zang too. Whoosh. Oh. God, Aurora is so goddamn powerful. I keep making mention of it specifically because I'm bothered by how powerful she is on normal mode. Like I'm considering, I'm considering run, uh, doing a hard mode run. For Aurora, just so just so it actually feels uh, just so it actually feels you know decent, but I don't like playing hard mode with any of the other characters. Even Zang, even Zang, too, even Zang, who ends up you know starting off stupidly OP and ends up falling off uh, uh, towards the very end. I don't like playing hard mode with him because uh, because of the uh, of the increased enemy density that uh, that he has to deal with. Like. Developers, is there? Um, I see you have a normal and hard mode. Do you have like a like a moderately do you have hard mode? Plus, please. Do you have Do you have Do you have like an in between difficulty that is not such a dramatic spike that it just makes me want to go back to the earlier difficulty so that I'm winning again? Please. Yeah, a bloodless has that big uh, has that big problem for me. I can make it about halfway through the bloodless run on hard mode, but I can't go any further than that. I am just not skilled enough with her toolkit. And let me be make this explicitly clear: bloodless's toolkit is fucking great. It's 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 very explicitly a skill issue on my end. But goddamn, does that does that gulf feel so bad to attempt to fight through? Stab. Another shard for Igni. 
A stab of love. Behold the you. corridor of spikes. Ah, this is why we have to kill Orthros. Guard. 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 Behold a second corridor of spikes. Intraversible. We have no, unless you have Orthros. If you have Orthros defeated, then you get spike immunity, so you can come up here. Welcome to the mystery on the other side. Another confession. Man with hat. Now we have access to the, uh, the third to last area in the game. The Oriental Sorcery Lab. We didn't get to see this during the randomizer run. And uh, and that is explicitly because we only got to uh, fight up the Jeebel during the rando. So... Ah, the you'll notice that the, the that it is called the Orient uh, that it is called the Oriental Sorcery Lab. So, if you uh, know if you know um, what your uh, if you know your thematic storytelling and what and what Zen and what Zengetsu is supposed to be referencing, it's pretty obvious that we're gonna end up fighting Zengetsu uh, Zengetsu up here. Ha, <laughs> ha, <laughs> monkey. Type and also, clothes. the uh, the very Asian uh, the very Asian sounding flute in the background, you know, and the bridges. The Vermilion Bridge, the soccer, the soccer trees in the background, and in the foreground, yeah. and everywhere, monkeys. Mm, don't want to go through here yet. Want to actually explore all of the uh, Oriental Sorcery Garden, specifically because up monkeys. here we have access to an area that we did not have access to uh, in, in any other in any other way. Mm, the very tip top of Danchet Cathedral. Yay. The mm. <laughs> you can just call it Cryo Wraith. That's what I always end up calling them. Ha! Huh, I saw her hair clip through the bell. And. Yep, that's all that was up here. Just an MP. Plus. <laughs> Curse is a status ailment that I'm actually okay with being in the game, specifically for all of the other characters. Miriam, on the other hand, has an absolute bitch of a time dealing with curse. Uh, cutting, uh, cutting her total HP and uh, MP in half, you know, really, uh, really limits her survivability. You know, those monkeys are really cruising for a bruising. Oh, I, I, that's pretty cool. So you, you go through one way, you can, you can actually use those doors to. to okay, and where's that one going to tell? Jesus Christ! So don't we have a little puzzle on our hands? Uh, the transport puzzle uh, for for this part of the garden is honestly really simple. Uh, it is all trial and error, mind you, oh, but Jesus it's Christ. it's ah. not trial and error enough to ever be frustrating. So, Glados, what are you doing here? Now, uh, where do you mention Glados? Because there are portals. They're even on oh. the floors. They're okay. using portals on the goddamn floors. <laughs> See, these guys are going every which way. <laughs> Marty, you're just not thinking fourth dimensionally. What the mm. fuck? Well, we're not. Well, we're only a two dimensional being. We're ah. not allowed to think uh, fourth dimensionally. You got to work on it. Mm. Ah, finally. And Cap gives us another Agnes. We have revenge on the monkeys. Honestly, the Gui the Guizans are uh, are a bit are. They're an annoyance, certainly, but they're not honestly a big threat. Like very little, a uh, very little in Aurora's playthrough actually qualifies as a threat, aside from the bosses. And even the bosses aren't not, aren't honestly all that big of a threat once you actually uh, once you're comfortable with her kit. Stupid mimics. Stupid and gimmicks. No ah. mm. Looking for more confessions and firefly elixirs. We need one more firefly elixir in order to max out Igni. No, are, you, are, you, are you really just going to take that from that stupid monkey? Yes. Slap you around. Oh, uh, because we have because we have infinite flight, we don't really need to uh, to actually deal with uh, with combat in a majority of the Oriental Sorcery uh, Lab. There are a couple of hallways that we have to deal with combat in, but they're real, but they're they're very infrequent. So, uh, I tell you, those monkeys are gouging for a bruising. Mm. Gouging. Uh, there's no, there's no I vowel between the U and the S. It looks like Gujin to me, or Gujin. 
Or gu or gushin. Uh, yeesh. Maybe 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 gushin it. Kamikaze! Oh come on, cats are too selfish to commit kamikaze. Well, no, no, no. They're, it's not kamikaze as in the suicide bomber. It's kamikaze as in the original intent of the word divine wind. Divine wind. Got you. Yeah. Fluffy. Thing. I mean, yes, literally kamikaze. Kami <laughs> as in god and and kaze, wind. God wind. Yep. Cat god. God cat. And we're not going to go wind. into the carpenter room. Um, the main reason is the main reason for that is actually because Carpenter is a boss fight that I am never comfortable with because of its uh, because of his extremely fast uh, attack animation with the uh, with the throwing knives. Whoa! You were mm. sure game was ineffective? Mm. Oh, no things. HP, no HP up there. It's okay. You'll have another chance at maybe getting an HP up the next time you go through there because this game does not replenish walls or surfaces that don't necessarily contain objects. Hmm. Another uh, Robert off of the Gweezin. And... Hmm. Thanks, Rubella. There's Fire our fly final elixir. Firefly Elixir. Yay. Oh my god, he's standing on the ceiling. Yeah, and the, then ni when you... the ninjas <laughs> actually have uh, actually have uh, Miriam's invert. I don't and... think that the assassins, <laughs> which are the er earlier versions of them, do. But the nin uh, but it, it makes uh, fighting the ninjas as... Um, as bloodless a bit uh, as a as bloodless a bit more tedious than it's supposed to be. Anyway, we have successfully made it to the end of the Oriental Sorcery Lab. So in the next part, we will deal with Zang 2, checking walls. Be safe, everybody. Check the walls. There may be things hidden behind the thin partitioning. <laughs>